Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are going to start talking about deoxyribonucleic acid, or as you may have heard of it before, DNA. Uh, you will get used to seeing that big word, deoxyribonucleic acid, and you will get used to seeing that shorter abbreviation, DNA. I promise never to make you spell deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, I don't know if I can spell it. So today we're going to focus on just introducing you to what this substance is and a little bit about why it's important, and most importantly for today, how we learned about it. So today we're going to be bringing back those ideas of the scientific process. We are going to talk about actual scientists, and we are going to talk about uh, some observations and experiments that were done to learn the things that you are going to learn about DNA. All right, so let's get started. Uh, again, DNA is an abbreviation for deoxyribonucleic acid. What is it? As it turns out, this is a type of organic compound. We learned about those when we learned about cell processes. Specifically, DNA is a nucleic acid. And if you can recall, we learned that each one of these four organic compounds that we learned about are built out of repeating units. So if this long black thing here is a picture of DNA, then you can see it's built out of these repeating units, and those repeating units are nucleotides in the case of nucleic acid. We're going to learn about some of these specific nucleotides that make up DNA later. And yes, if you are wondering, this is an actual picture of a molecule of DNA. Uh, you can probably guess this was taken used taken using an electron microscope, those really powerful, really expensive um, types of microscopes. So here we are looking at an individual organic compound here. You can almost see the atoms that make it up. Pretty cool. So DNA is a nucleotide. Their DNA is a nucleic acid. It is built out of nucleotides. Now, why do we care? Very importantly, DNA is the hereditary material found in the nucleus of every cell. So every cell that has a nucleus has DNA inside of it. That DNA is the instructions that the cell uses to carry out every single function. Uh, we're going to learn more later in the next units, but DNA is what determines what you look like. Um, when we study genetics, we're going to be learning about how we go from DNA to determining what you look like. How DNA is inherited from your parents why you look a little bit like both of your parents, such something that we touched about in the last unit. So DNA is the instructions, is the hereditary material found in the nucleus of every cell. And remember, so when a cell performs mitosis, when that new cell has an exact copy of DNA, we are copying this exact same strand. It's gonna have the same nucleotides in the same order. And again, we'll learn more about that later. So DNA, nucleic acid, built out of nucleotides, it is the instructions or the hereditary material found in the nucleus of every cell. Possibly DNA is the most important substance in all of life. Next, we're going to focus on how we learned things about it. Uh, you might have seen this kind of a shape before, this twisted ladder. That's a good model of what DNA looks like. Um, much better to understand than that picture we saw on the last slide. So how did we figure this out? We're going to talk about a woman named Dr. Rosalind Franklin. And in 1953, she did some breakthrough work and she discovered the structure of DNA. She basically used complicated tests uh, that give these different patterns that are seen when you x-ray a substance. And she was able to determine that the shape of DNA is something called a double helix. And that's the shape we see right here, a double helix. Um, again, you could call it like two strands in a spiral, or you could call it a twisted ladder. But you can see that we've got these two different strands that are connected to each other with these horizontal rungs, and they are twisting. So that shape is called a double helix. And that was Dr. Roslin's really important structure. So a long time before this, we knew that DNA was in cells, but we didn't know what it was really like or what it did. So Dr. Roslin did not work on her own. Uh, shortly after Dr. Roslin did her work, two more scientists said, aha, 
I think we can build on this. I think we can learn even more. Just like remember when we learned about the scientific process, we learned that it's a circle. Scientists learn from each other and then learn more. Watson and Crick were the guys who shortly after Rosalind Franklin came up with her shape of DNA, they did a little bit more work and said, we are going to be a little bit more specific. So together they figured out some important things. They figured out the shapes and the names of the nucleotides that are used to build DNA. And when we talk about the nucleotides, we are going to be talking about these bright colored letters in the middle here. So again, we're looking at a model of DNA and uh, we've got that double helix shape with the rungs in the middle. If we looked at this zoomed in part right here that I'm circling with my pointer, you can see we've got the two strands of the ladder, these gray, uh, gray shapes with yellow letters. And then the rungs are in the middle. And those are where our nucleotides are. So there are four nucleotides in DNA, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Those names might be a little tricky to remember, but for the most part, we will be representing them by the letters they start with, A, T, G, and C. Try to remember adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. So Watson and Crick were able to perform experiments in which they were able to determine how much of each nucleotide was in a given DNA strand. And something that they figured out that the amount of adenine was always equal to the amount of thymine. And the amount of guanine was always equal to the amount of cytosine. So they performed an experiment they analyzed their results, and these are the conclusions that they were able to draw. I wanna tell you why that's important. What they figured out is that the nucleotides can only go together in a specific way to make this double helix, to make this twisted ladder. What they figured out is that adenine will always connect to thymine. So if we look at the rungs of the ladder or the nucleotides that make up the ladder, A will always attach to T, and cytosine will always attach to guanine. So that's the work they figured out. So overall, we know that DNA is a type of nucleic acid. It is made out of nucleotides. We know that Dr. Rosalind Franklin was able to figure out the shape of DNA, what we call a double helix, which is like a twisted ladder. And we know that Watson and Crick were scientists that came in and refined Dr. Rosalind Franklin's model and they figured out that the four nucleotides in that twisted ladder are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And they figured out that in the rungs of that ladder, adenine always pairs with thymine, cytosine always pairs with guanine. 